God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, blessings to you. Blessings. Blessings to you. This is the day the Lord God has made. Good God Almighty. And we're going to rejoice today. And we're going to be exceedingly glad. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Welcome to uh, you guys of faith to live by. Hallelujah. This is Samuel Hudson and my wife. Vanessa Hudson. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and little buddies in the midst. In the distance, glory to God. <laughs> but God, we just want to thank you so much. Hallelujah for your goodness and your mercy uh, in our lives, oh God. Thank you for helping us uh, to uh, to continue, God, in in the way of hey, good morning, Sister Tanya. Blessings to you. Good morning. Everyone. Good to see you this morning. When you guys come on, if you would uh, share the video, uh, invite some people to come along. That would be great. Those that are watching on YouTube, if you would subscribe to our channel. Uh, help us share the good message, the message of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. Uh, and, and those on Facebook, of course, help us invite people, get some people to come on this morning. That'd be great. But we're going to pray, pray and uh, just follow the spirit this morning. Not, I don't know if we're going to be here very long. So you know what that means. It's probably one of the longest broadcasts ever. But <laughs> let's let's pray and get started this morning. Father God, we just thank you. Glory to God for your goodness in our lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, for being our sustainer, yes, God, our Savior and Lord, God, our shepherd, oh God. Thank we thank you, God, for bringing us into this moment, Father, yes, bringing us into this moment, oh God, keeping us, oh God, and uh, helping us, oh God, to, to uh, keep the course, to keep the faith, mm -hmm. God, even when dealing with attacks, oh God, and dealing with uh, things that have come against the body, not just for us, but those that are listening to God, uh, different things have happened in the lives of, of your people, God. Some have lost loved ones, oh God. Some right now are dealing with grief and bereavement, oh God, and, and, and things in the body, things in relationship, God. But we just stand today by the uh, power of the Holy Ghost and the word of God. And as the scriptures say, after doing all the stand, stand therefore. So, God, we just thank you. We give you glory for being great and good in our lives, oh God. And we just ask, God, for your guidance this morning, God, that you would grant to us and your people, oh God, a spirit of wisdom and revelation into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of you. Thank you, oh God, that our worship, oh God, will be received of you this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. Have your way. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way this morning, Father God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I guess I just go there for the real short. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you more today because you care for us in such a special way that's why i praise you i lift you up and i magnify your name oh that's why my heart is filled with praise my heart my mind, my soul belongs to you. You pay the price for me. Hallelujah. Way back on Calvary, that's who I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I try to lift you the floor a bit. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We just give you the glory this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We just give you the praise this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah. We love on you right yes, now. This so morning. We thank you, Father. 
We that praise you right now, me. Lord God. That this is the day that you me. have made, Lord God. That and we will me. rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. We thank you, Father. That we praise you right now, Lord God, for never thank leaving you. us, Lord God. Never forsaking us, uh, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for leading us and guiding us, yeah. Lord God. We are disciples yeah. of you, Lord God. We are the sheep of your pasture in the voice of a stranger. We will not follow, yeah. Lord God. Have your way in our life right Amen. now, Lord God. We say your kingdom come, your will be done Amen. on this earth as it is in as heaven. Is Hallelujah, in Lord God. Hallelujah, Amen. Lord God. Pour out into Amen. us, Father. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. As we pour out into Amen. others, Lord God, you pour into Amen. us, Lord God. Our cup never runs dry, yep. Lord God. It Amen. always runs over, Lord God. Amen. Full of you, Lord God. Amen. All of you, Lord God, and none of us, Lord God. Amen. We thank you, Father. We praise you Thank right you. now, Lord right God. Now. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory, Father. Yes. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise right Lord. now, Lord God. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You oh, are yes. Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning in the end. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you are unchanging, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You are the way maker, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We praise you right now, Lord God, for your open hand upon our life right now, Lord God. We love on you, Lord God. We worship you right now, Father. Father, hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you for the breakthrough coming upon yes. our life right Amen. now in the name of Jesus. Name Supernatural of Jesus. right now, Lord God. We are living uh, in your kingdom, Lord God. Uh, Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Father. Ooh. We praise you right now. Right. At this time, I'm going to read Psalms 100 in its entirety. Um, and it reads, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and become his presence with and come before his presence with singing. Amen. Know that the Lord is God. It is he Amen. who has made us, not we ourselves. We Amen. are his people in the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and sorry, y'all. <laughs> and a thank and a thank offering and into his courts with praise. Amen. Be thankful and say so to him. Bless and affectionately praise his name. For the Lord is God. His mercy and loving kindness are everlasting. His faithfulness and truth endures to all generations. Lord God, we thank you right now, Father. We praise you right now, Lord God. As we started off already singing a joyful noise to you, Lord God, we continue to do it, Lord God. We meditate on your word day and night, Lord God. The instructions, the manual of how we should be living out yes. on this life. I mean, in this world, during our life, Lord God, we thank you, Father. We praise you right now, Lord God, for our armor, Lord God, that we have from you to fight against the enemy, which is lurking day and night, Lord God. We thank you for our helmet of salvation, our breastplate of righteousness, our belt of truth, yes, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord um, God. We thank you that our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Lord God. We have the shield of faith. And we have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Lord God. We ask that you continue to lead us and guide us. Reveal to us the mysteries of the secret, deep, intimate knowledge of you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord God. We ask you right now to... Um, reveal the secrets to your prophet, Lord God. Our prophet Samuel Nathan with us this morning, Lord God. You speak to him, Lord God. You speak through him, Lord God. He is your mouthpiece this morning, Lord God. Give us wisdom and understanding, Lord God. Give us revelation, Lord God. We thank you. We praise you right now, Lord God, that we have the victory in the name of Jesus because you have already won the victory, Lord God. We thank you, Lord thank God, you. For giving us the strength, Lord God, Hallelujah. to fight against our enemy, Lord oh, God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We will continue to press toward the mark of the hot calling right now, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We praise you thank right you, now, Lord God. 
Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh. Hallelujah, Lord God. You are worthy, Father. Yes. You are worthy, Lord God. Um, Satan, we rebuke you right now in right Jesus' now. name. <laughs> Devil, we resist you and submit to God. In Hallelujah. We have no other God, no other idol, no other entity that we serve. Lord um, God, we thank you. We praise you right now, Lord right. God. Hallelujah, Lord uh, God. Great and marvelous is your name, Lord God. Uh, Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We praise uh, you right now, Lord God. Right. In the name of Jesus. Name of Hallelujah, Lord God. We pray right now Lord. that our spiritual sensitivity is heightened right now, Lord. that we see clearly, we hear clearly, Lord God, and we think clearly, Lord God. We yes. have a discerning spirit of you, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you right now right that now. our spirit is willing and our flesh is weak. Therefore, we have authority over our flesh in and we get our Jesus. flesh in line with our spirit, Lord God, yes. and our spirit is following after the Holy Spirit. Yes. We thank you, Lord Father. God. We praise you right now, Lord. Right and we give Lord. you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hey, first, I want to say, man, you were right about the light. Really? Yeah. Really? You were right. The light is going to be over here. But I was thinking it was four, but you you were right. I'm like, oh my God, I'm tripping this morning. Right. No, because I, I was just like, no, I know, but no, I was wrong. You know what I mean? I yeah. was wrong. You know what I mean? So I apologize for like, and you were just like, oh my God. But thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you, man. Praise and y'all, we want to uh, apologize <laughs> now for the the little one. He is growing. He's no longer an infant that sleeps throughout the morning. So oh if we're waddling around, we're still giving God's word. We're still oh being God. led by his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, man. Well, we're going to share something this morning, man. I, I think it's going to bless us, and it's going to be a, a blessing to the body of Christ this morning. And, and good morning to uh, those we see coming on with us, sister yes, uh, Tanya. Good morning, or good morning to you, uh, Mimi and Trin. Uh, blessing to you. Good to see you this morning. Thank you all for uh, joining us. We're going to deal with a subject. Uh, we titled this morning dealing with full restoration, full restoration. And we're going to kind of deal with it. Let's look at the scripture to kind of get started this morning. Joel chapter 2, and um, we're going to start at verse 25, and then we'll come back a little later on and read some other things in Joel. But let's start at first. Uh, I'll tell you what, baby, uh, I'm going to read Joel. If you would go to, go to, let's see, go to Jeremiah 33, verse 7 through 9. You read that next. We just give you a few scriptures. Well, what we want to kind of deal with, talking about full restoration this morning, uh, help us to understand that God is a God that restores, that repairs. And, and, and many times as the body of Christ, we're in need of restoration. Most times, many times when we come, when we come to the Lord, we're in need of restoration. You know what I mean? Because uh, the enemy has stolen things, uh, has broken things in our lives. We made, we, we were, a lot of times ignorant in, in a lot of years. Oh my God, I think that as being a uh, young Christian come to the Lord, and, and I've learned especially, I think I, I got born again when I was like 23, something like that, and 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 you know you know when you're young, you, you feel like you can conquer the world and you know everything in the world, then you come to Christ and you start realizing, oh my God, I really didn't know too much or not what I thought I did. So therefore, we've made a lot of mistakes. We've made a lot of mistakes, you know, and, I, and I've come to find then even after being uh, born again with the Holy Spirit that because of one of the major things of not being uh, well, well, the process of being renewed in our mind, getting our mind renewed. But then we still, after being born again, uh, make some mistakes. Still make mistakes. I, you just know what very well. Well, that means well, we're not perfect, right? We're not perfect, meaning without flaw. Uh, but we are in a in a in a body, spirit beings in a body, and we are growing and maturing. So, so that being said, there's going to be calls for restoration. There's going to be calls for things to be restored. Things will be broken. Sometimes relationships um, uh, can be broken. Uh, would need to be restored. Um, different kind of jobs and different kind of places uh, would need to be restored. 
um, just just different things because that, that happens when when we don't know the things that we need to know. We need restoration. So that's kind of what we're going to deal with this morning. And Joel 2 and 25 says, God says these words to the prophet Joel. I will restore to you the years. Now, note, isn't that amazing? The years. Sometimes our our um, mistakes, our our ignorance, you know what I mean? Or whatever the case may be, can cause us to live in years of depletion, years of defeat, years of unnecessary struggle. Unnecessary struggling, the loss, sometimes, sometimes sadly, the loss of life. The loss of life because of, as the Bible says, is often we use that scripture, Hosea 4 and 6, that my people perish from a lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. from a lack of knowledge. And, and I, I don't, I'm going to jump ahead of myself and just go kind of to the end. And what I've come to realize, one of those knowledges, I'm going to use the word recognizing, is recognizing the enemy. Mm -hmm. In order to receive, this is what I, I'm learning in my life, and, and I believe when God begins to do something for me, it's also other meaning, meaning women of God and people in the body of Christ that, that are in the same place or they can use the information. So what I'm learning that in, in for God to restore me, he's helping me. He's helping me. That's the process. He's helping me to recognize the enemy. Yeah. So, so and we're going to look at this verse a little later on the scripture. This is what I, I begin to add. And I know people get going to go theological with me, but I, I've added these scriptures together when it comes to James 4 and 7 says, submit unto God resist the devil and he will flee yeah. well in my mind every time i say resist i automatically think recognize mm -hmm. then you can resist yeah. recognize the enemy then we can resist the enemy because mm -hmm. even even in i've learned this like i always share often that i've been married before gone through divorce before been through ministry breakups and different things and 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 i've come to find even in uh in the workplace, oh my God, I'm dealing with jobs, with supervisors and family. There's all types of things about, about being alive on this earth. And and you and you can look back over your life and I realize most times we never did discover the enemy. We we had we had business meetings, we had church meetings, we had uh marriage counselors, you know what I mean? Uh you know all all these different groups. But many times the the real corporate or the real enemy most times goes undiscovered. You see what I'm saying? And and, and, we, and especially when we watch marriage, uh, marriage videos and stuff like that before, and counseling things like that. And many times I, I've noticed, even with us and with with in relationship, the enemy make you go look at each other, right? But he's the one standing in the middle, in the background, whispering, manipulating, lying. Throwing imaginations, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, trying to get feelings and stuff stirred up. So, you, so you're so you looking at him. And he's looking at, at her. And they're looking at them instead of looking at him. Yeah. Recognizing him. Yeah. And sometimes that recognizing him, it, it, oh God, sometimes that recognizing him is not, is, is, isn't just a, a present current activity of the enemy. It's a uh, long time ago when I was a little boy, little girl, or in another relationship, or in another place, work of the enemy. Did you get that? Yeah. So you see what I'm saying? So sometimes it's like, oh, they got a demon, they got a devil. Well, no, not always. Sometimes it's a seed that the enemy has planted that has caused them, him or her, to think or look at things a certain kind of way. See, oh my God, I, I go to that movie. I think we might have watched a piece of it, but you probably heard of it. The movie Inception, mm -hmm. heard of yeah. that before. And it's really talking about the power of thought. Mm -hmm. And the main guy that movie, his wife, when you find out the end of it, he actually caused her death by he planted a thought in her mind, but that he could never get it out. And it's a strange kind of science fiction kind of movie, but it has a lot of pieces of reality in it, especially with dealing with the power of the mind, but that thought was placed in her mind and could never get it out of her head. So on through eternity, that thought was just coming up and it became a nightmare and a problem and all that stuff. But with us, the enemy un understands the power of words and thoughts and experiences how they affect us. So I would say it definitely wasn't by accident that your mother got involved with an abusive person. 
I would say it was definitely not by accident that that certain things happened. Not not that it was the hand of God working it, but there was an enemy for many of us from birth that was trying to destroy, trying to alter destiny. So let me try to corrupt his character. I, I remember as a young boy, oh my God. And I, I'm glad I responded the way I did, but maybe, but I remember as a young boy, I was watching my older cousins. They was looking at these little, these little magazines, them old dirty magazines, Playboy. But see, as a young boy, when I saw what they were looking at, I was just like, oh, and I took off running. I was like, oh, that's nasty. <laughs> you see, but even then, though, I, I can look later on how the enemy was trying to plant a seed in there. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? And, 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 and if nothing else to look at um, intimacy or those things that are of God in a kind of strange kind of way. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? See, and, and even me, this person, I, I said, wow, I can see how now that and that has caused me to respond in a certain kind of way. See, but what my point of saying that is recognizing our enemy. Why? So we can get full restoration. There's something that that happened in my life as a child in college in high school or or at church it, you got so you have to do self exam I'm, I'm big on that i'm getting bigger bigger really and, and more and more i talk to the lord as a matter of fact i was listening to i, I share this i get this brother prop never met him before in my life uh was listening to uh prophet minnie scott they had a men's conference over the weekend i believe it was friday and saturday and i don't know if the guy was her son or but it's, he got the last same last name uh, Brian Scott was ministering, but in 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 in, in, in I'm kind of like a Bishop Damon, like he told me. Bishop Damon told me when I first met him, he said, "I knew you was a man of God and could hear from God because the things you said you was hearing from God, I was hearing the same thing." Mm -hmm. And when I was listening to uh, Brian C. Scott speak that Friday night in the men's conference, it just he was so so open and transparent. He was sharing many things that God has been dealing with me. And, and we've been sharing about, and that main scripture was, uh, search me, O Lord, yeah. and see if there be any wicked way in me. That's in Psalms 139, I believe it is. But that, that is powerful there. And, and what does that help us do? Recognize the enemy. Search me. See, I'm, I'm learning this. Just like this morning, that's why I apologize immediately, because I'm like, because I had a problem with it. See what I'm saying? It's like we have a problem with apologizing and recognizing we're wrong, even in the very smallest thing. You've got to just do this. And, and I'm, I'm trying, and I did it on air, on live TV, because I'm going to make the devil out of lie. And I want to do that all. No, don't, don't be slow to apologize if you're wrong or even if you're right, but you hurt people's feelings. See, now, now, now can we flow there? See, now, that, now that's something we got to fix. See, think about it. You can be right, but if you're right, it's hurting your partner. It's not, it's not really going to or solve anything, or if you, I'm right, I know I'm right, but it's pushing your children away, or pushing your mate away, or making them not want to be around you. But well, what is your right really affording you? What is your right really benefiting? You think about it. Well, I know I'm right. I proved the point. I proved the point. Okay, that, but now you're in there by yourself. So you see what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to come to your family reunion with you. Don't nobody want to celebrate with you. You see what I'm saying? So what being right can 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 kind of get your wrong results if you don't handle it the right way. Mm -hmm. So that goes back to the scripture, recognize the enemy. What's one way I'm learning how to recognize the enemy is do what? Lord, search me. Yeah. Turn the spotlight on me. I, and I begin to pray this way, like, Lord, and, and this I, and this is, uh, oh my God, a prayer that is, is really like not pride out the way. Lord, help me to focus on the tree stuck in my eye and not the splinter in their eye yeah. or her eye. Or his eye. See now, the flesh and self don't want to do that because right. I feel like I'm always right. right. No, no, I, I tell my wife that's a baby. I ain't never wrong. Because a lot of times I'll be talking about different things and we're googling stuff like that. I said, "Girl, I'm always right." And in my mind, I'm like, because I, I try not to say many things without having did some research or I'm talking from a place mm -hmm. of not. But that still don't mean you're wrong. That don't mean you remember everything right. right. You know what I mean? You, yeah, that was twelve years ago. But let's get into some scripture. But notice why we're saying these things because it's God's desire to restore us fully. When they talk about that word restore, what is that word restore? It means to bring it back full. To, in some cases, it means to repair, but to bring it back like it used to be. And in other cases, to bring it back better. I can have a better relationship than I ever had before if I learn to let God restore. 
and 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 use the Holy Spirit to help me to uh, 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 discover or recognize, as we say the word, recognize our enemy. This is a little cliche of sounding, but most times your biggest enemy is the enemy that's in me. That's in you. I, I, and that, I know we, we can say that the Jesus come, but it's going to take some aggressive, uh, uh, how can I say, aggressive action on our behalf to turn it on me. Mm-hmm. And see, think about it, that, that goes against human nature. That's almost like taking a knife. That must be in some kind of scientific uh, study or result that, that the human being cannot hurt themselves or. It's, it's something like that. You can't drown yourself. Like you can't drown yourself. It's some other things. Yeah, some other things too. But like, it's just not in our human nature like to, to, to turn against ourselves. So when you find somebody committing suicide and, and there's something else at work, yeah. something has yeah. went wrong for them to hurt themselves mm-hmm. or like that. So think about it. It's just not really in our human nature to be wrong or to be like, you know what, man, dog, I blew it. It was my fault. Mm-hmm. That's, so, but all of that goes into what? Recognizing the enemy. Why do we need to recognize the enemy? Why? Because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he goes unrecognized, he's going to continue to kill, steal, and destroy, even though you speak it in tongues. Mm-hmm. See now? Did you get that? Yeah. Even though we're speaking in tongues and we saying hallelujah, praise the Lord, tamarind beating, dancing around, falling out on the floor, if we don't recognize the enemy, that's an enemy. Good God Almighty, we're going to fail to get full restoration, and if and, and we're not uh, safe there, then then not only will we get won't get full rest- restoration, we'll actually begin to lose what we already have. The thing, oh my God, baby. can I can I add something? So when you said, um, even though we're praying in tongues or whatever, but we still have like that attitude, that issue, or whatever. Literally this morning, that's like what came to my mind Mm -hmm. was like, okay, even though you're praying in tongues because you don't specifically know what to pray for or if you already pinpointed that part of um, what you're praying for. And he was like, okay, well, let me seal it in the Holy Spirit. But you still got that attitude. And even when you're done with that attitude, you still feel the same. Uh, No, done with the praying in tongues. You still got that attitude still feeling the same then you may not have really been praying in tongues. And the reason why I say that is because um, when you're speaking to the Holy Spirit, he's not going to continue to make you feel. You're reaching out to him to get, like you said, restoration. You're reaching out to him to get answers for him to lead you and to guide you because obviously you're doing it in the flesh is making you have this attitude. So if you're not praying, like, there's people that say push to uh what is it pray until, pray until something, until something happens, happens. Push. pray until success happens all those different things that means with our prayer too if we don't feel a change within us while we're praying it hasn't been resolved we haven't gotten to it and like how you mentioned to me before okay if you got off the loop one time doing something and you try to jump back on board but you're doing the beginning stage of mm-hmm. when you're getting back on it you're not really doing it anymore because you've already advanced past that level. So you have to basically start where you left off and go further. So when you're praying in tongues and you're upset, you got to start with you being upset, but you don't end until you now have the joy of the Lord. Lord, Let me just jump on what you're saying, especially with the dealing with the praying in tongues. See, because this is a couple of things. First, first thing we have to understand that this is, oh God, and it, but it tells us this in First Corinthians fourteen that talk, it talks about these spiritual things, especially about speaking in tongues and prophesying. But the first place of praying in tongues is your spirit. It's you praying. Mm-hmm. It's your born again spirit praying. Mm-hmm. See now, then now this that's it comes the problem. Most it goes it always goes back to time, quality time, mm-hmm. and quantity time with God. See now that quality time. Put it, okay. Let me explain that. Quantity time can be the length of time, yeah. how often you do it, because we should have regular times of prayer and worship and all that stuff with God, right? Quantity time. And it should be multiple times throughout the day. If you're a mature Christian, one time you're more in the morning at nighttime, that is not no mature Christian. Yeah. Come on now. That's just saying what a hug. But then now that quality, now here's the key that's just come from the Holy Ghost. That quality time is when it's necessary. When he unctions you, 
when he prompts you or when you know it's you're getting in the flesh. These these this is not the only definition of quality time, but this is a part of quality time that most believers, I don't think we I have really understood that when it comes to praying the spirit, it's like when um when I get an unction to pray, most times we don't go pray. Yeah. When we know I'm about to I'm feeling some kind of way, I'm in my feelings, good time to pray. Yeah. See, that's a quality time also, not just the long time or that that is I think that's first and five. Vitally important. Long by yourself first before everybody. We always talk about that before everybody else gets started. You get started with God, so you can face it. You're not gonna be. I'm just be. You cannot face the world, your family, any. I, this is my. Oh, I believe this. It's cool to be true. I've seen them. It just seems it's just the hardest thing to do to try to face the world and family and situations and work and whatever successfully mm-hmm. without first having the adequate time with God. And, and, and so often we run it on fumes. See, we run it on fumes, and see, and, and if you recognize it, uh, if Adam, everything is changed. Every, it's, but it's crazy. See, think about it. Your cup was full. Yeah. You, but see, you living off of that full overflow, and see, it is just like the, the, how they talk about how how you can cook a frog while he's still alive. You just gradually turn the heat up on him. See, he don't even know he cooking. Yeah. So the enemy gradually is turning up the heat on us. Or, or yeah, or people by by you turning down your praise gradually, mm-hmm. turning down your prayer walk, your word walk, your you see what I'm saying gradually and before you know, see it's like oh my god, I'm cussing people out. Oh my god, we're about to get a divorce. Oh my god, we're about to lose the, t- the house. Oh my god, I, I'm, the, the, I'm I'm in the I'm about to get fired from my job. And then you look back like me and my supervisor were good friends. Like how 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 gradually. See, how, what's one way that can happen? Not being sensitive to, or you no, know, being obedient, because you are sensitive to those quality times. You know, I should be praying. I should pray right now. You know what I mean? This is kind of my flesh. Is, I should pray right now. And then further to add to that, what, what to understand what that quality time we're dealing with is when we pray in the spirit, most believers do not pray long enough in the spirit for it to do what, to do what it can do in our life. Most time, and this, the Lord was talking to me about that this morning, and I was doing, I was guilty of this too. He's like, to Samuel, he said, most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, you pray in the spirit, so the spirit begins to minister to you. Like, so I, I feel the joy of the Lord. Yeah. See, I'm like, oh my God. See, oh, and see, I'm, wow, man, God's presence is here. Right? But see, that, okay, that's good, but what about to the place where now you pray past, see, he told me that a couple of years ago, let like, Simi, you've got to begin praying past yourself. Mm, that's good. So we pray in the spirit, I get that heaviness off me, I get the tiredness off me, oh man, oh yeah, thank you, G. But yeah. you, really, you just getting started. Yeah. So now let's pray past myself, mm-hmm. let's pray where, where, where the uh, Ephesians says, you pray in the Holy Spirit, you're praying for all saints. Yeah. By praying in the Holy Ghost, you're praying for others. Also, it talks about you speak mysteries in the spirit. You understand what I'm saying? So, it's, it, and then this is what the real key, and we get back on topic, hopefully, is that when you pray in the spirit, as you continue to pray, those of you that have prayed long enough, you'll notice that your prayer takes on a strength if you'll keep going. The vocals and the, the the articulations, even the 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 language begins to change. But what's happening when it happens? That's when the Holy Ghost starts praying with you. Yeah. Now he what 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 it says in uh, uh, Romans eight and twenty six, and he uh, uh, and, and and the Holy Spirit comes and bears us up in our weaknesses because we don't know what prayer to offer as we should. Yeah. But he comes; he knows the perfect will of God, so he comes and begins to pray with us. But that's not. See, this is gonna sound strange. In the beginning of praying in the Spirit, it's your spirit praying. If you just think for a moment, you can see that that's true. Because right now, we start praying in tongues. It, it's okay. I'm praying in tongues. But if you stay there for a while, you start feeling like it kick in, like something, like a gear changes. Yeah. That's not you changing gears. Yeah. Now you're you're coming in tune or beginning getting one with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Ghost is beginning to pray with you. You see what I'm saying? But at the first place, that's why we t- teach you like this. Any born again believer can pray in tongues anytime you want to. And it, and the Bible says it's a vitally 
there's a, 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 what's a, a great benefit to be able to do that because you build yourself up in your most holy faith. You're speaking mysteries. I mean, so, so I, I always say pray in tongues more than you're speaking English. Yeah. But the length of time there, <laughs> the length of time there, see, now this is going to help us do what? Recognize mm -hmm. our enemy. See, because think about it. You can pray every day until you get that good feeling. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you're going to recognize your enemy. Yeah. You just got the, the enemy's effects off of you. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why those effects got there. How did you get in, uh, what is it, uh, in Isaiah, I think it's 61, that it says he's giving me beauty for ashes, mm -hmm. the oil of joy in place of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a heavy burden down spirit. Let's find out how the heavy burden down spirit got there. Let's find out how that, that mourning, grieving got on you. Let's see how the, your life came to ashes. Mm -hmm. See, you can... Yeah. Out. To uproot it out, so it don't keep doing it. See, see, that's how that's that's what stops us from getting full restoration. Most, oh my God, and, and in our churches, and in, I'm talking with us, fellowships, and men and women of God. Most time, we just we're dancing and high fiving on on top of ashes. Good God, that's good. Did you get that? Most times, well, we need a thousand people to hear this word. Listen to this. Most time, Christian believers, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking believers, we're just dancing around on ashes, dancing on, on top of defeat, dancing on top of divorce. You write the Lord, you two steps away from the Lord, you're being at your house and you don't even know it. Did you get that? Two, you, what, 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 what's the people always, people say things like this. You're just one move away from a blessing. You're just one prayer away from a breakthrough. You just one move away from being divorced. You just one move away from being by yourself. You one move away from losing your job. You one step away from, yeah, because what? We need to pray. The old churches call it praying through. Mm -hmm. Praying through. Praying through. So pain, praying past me getting a good feeling. Now let's find out how I lost a good feeling. Yeah. Glory to God. This is what we call recognizing the enemy. Why is that? Because uh, uh, you got your scripture, babe. Let me read mine one more time. Why, why are we talking like this? Because God wants to restore fully. What, what does he want to restore? Listen to this. I will restore to you. This is Joel 2 and 25. I will restore to you the year. Let me go ahead and do over there. What is that word restore? Let's see if you got anything good in there. That word restore means to recompense, right? He will recompense. Uh, it talks about restitution, to repay. That's restitution means to repay for damages done. Damages done. Think about that. God wants to repay for the damages done in the last situation, in the last season of your life. What happened in college, whatever. He wants to rest, rest, to bring restitution, that make amends. See there? To be safe in mind, body, or state. Get your safe, your security, your, your confidence back. That's been stolen. That's all in a part of God's full restoration. Spirit, soul, body, money, family, position, anything that's been lost, that's been damaged, or that's been paralyzed, God wants to restore you. Maybe you used to be a go-getter. Maybe you used to go after it, but because of seasons and things that have happened, you see what I'm saying? You no longer go at it like you used to. You've lost, she's lost her love. She, well, I'm watching the uh, Top Gun. <laughs> oh my God! What did that? Yeah, that was from that movie Top Gun, right? But yeah, you've lost that feeling. You've lost that joy. See, see, and if we pray through and also practice um, that that scripture, praying that scripture sincerely, Lord, search me, mm -hmm. see if there be a wicked way in me, if there be a way. God, could I be doing this wrong? Is my approach wrong? Is my answer wrong? It, it could be anything. Anything. Yeah. This is going to help us do what? Get full restoration, recompense. Because sometimes, once again, so many times, it's not the enemy out there. It's the enemy that's the enemy. See, because God, the way we're created, I, I, I just really truly believe there's nobody on this earth that can stop me. It's mm -hmm. me. Right. And if somebody on the outside does stop you or hinder you, I believe we allowed it. See, I used to hear people talking about that old man I got, that old man, he just sorry, he just this, he just that, or she just ain't no good. She a, what that who was it, Delilah that killed Samson or somebody? She just a Delilah, that old Eve. But then you have to think about it. Well, you chose him. You the one said I do. 
So you look past them red flags. You see what I'm saying? So your I your I do is disturbed, it's messed up. So then so maybe they do have all those problems, but see, you done said I do 12 times to the same foolishness. So maybe if you fix your I doer, your chooser, you can bypass all of that. But see, you keep looking at all the problems in those people, but see, you wouldn't even get connected to those people if you get your chooser on the inside of you fixed. You keep choosing with your flesh. You keep choosing with, with, with stats and statistics and stuff like that. See, Lord, if there be any wicked way in me. You see what I'm saying? If there be any wicked way, why is this important? Because God wants to do what? He, he says, I will restore the years. Oh my God, babe. Thank you. Oh my God. Here, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get out, not get stuck, hopefully. But I can look back. I've been here long enough in my life. There was a time in my life, there was a it was about a 10 year period. I think it was about I think it was close to 10 years, between between seven to 10 years after going through a divorce. Oh my God. It was just I was living in a desert. I mean, like. I mean, it was just like bronze on top of my head. It was just like about to have a nervous breakdown. I believe I did have a nervous breakdown. Just going through a series of stuff. And I, at, for a long season, just pointing at everybody else. Because I could see the wrong. But God had to. And, and it's amazing when God started talking and showing. And, and that was, didn't happen overnight. He really starts talking to you. See what I'm saying? Because who can he deal with? It, I mean, he, he can deal with anybody. But. You're right here with him right now. That person might not even be praying over there. Yeah. I want to get better if they don't get better, yeah. right? Yeah. Baby, go ahead and read your truth. I done got stuck on that. So it's Jeremiah 33. Well, Jeremiah, is it this one? Yeah, 33, okay. verse 7 through 9. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and will build them as at the first. Wow. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. And we'll build them. Now that kind of goes with our ministry theme, restoring the breach. Mm -hmm. Restore with the, that's part of our uh ministry uh slogan there, a foundation scripture for us, uh, Isaiah 58 and 12. Uh, we're restorers of the breach, and that talks about restoring the broken place. I will make you as you were at first. And see, and I've learned this, especially from uh, the prophet, that not only will God make you as good as you were at first, but God tends to make you better. That's almost just getting back to the beginning would be good, but God is working on making us better. Isn't it? Isn't it amazing? I can be better than I than my best before. Yeah. When I was at my best before the divorce. Mm -hmm. See, when you were at your best before the breakup, when you were at your best before mom and daddy split up or papa died, or you see what I'm saying? God is saying, I can make you better. Than when you were at your best. So think about your best time in life when you thought you had it all together. You know when you thought you were swinging. She got that love and feeling. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> I gotta stop watching the movie, but, but but you know when you walked out, you know sometimes you feel good. You know, ain't nobody got. You, see, that's a good place to be. In. When you just, you ain't got a couple from me. I know I was popping when I walked out this morning. I know this watch was right. I know my, I, I was straight. I mean, you really ever feel like that? You know this dress cute. Come on, now, when you bought it off the rack, you knew this thing was going to be right. You didn't buy no garbage. You, you just know it. You just feel good about yourself. Think back to that place. God is saying, I can restore and make it better than that. that oh, my God. Oh, go here, baby. Finish. Oh, my God. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will ponder all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy and praise and an honor, honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Oh my God, but I think you want to prophesy that. This, this, yeah, you got to prophesy that right there. Because yeah, because because the verse I'm finna read now, I got I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna prophesy this over our lives until you right now. This is a time of full 
restoration, you, full restoration of our joy, peace, strength. That's emotionally, spiritually, financially. He already been telling me, and I've been saying it over again, this is the year you believe. Now, now you have to understand when prophets say certain stuff, just because they say it, if you don't operate your faith for it, you might not experience it. You got to take that thing and put it in your mouth and in your heart and on your wall and in your in your daily view and keep that thing alive, right? But this is the year of jubilee. All debts paid off. God said so. See, now now what you just read, what verse where is that at? Verse, verse, look at verse nine. And it shall be to me. See, now you got, see, what, see, that's another place that when you look at the word of God, see, when you walk the Holy Ghost and walk with God, see, he'll start, t see, even in the, this morning when I was reading some scripture, he had to stop me. He's like, see, see, you know, you're just reading it, right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to receive that? Yeah. See, so while I, this morning by myself, out there by the water, I did, oh my God, by that water there. They ain't going to jump in it though, but we was by that beautiful water. And, but I was reading scripture. He said, send me, so you're just going to read it or you're going to take it. You're going to prophesy to yourself or you're going to take it. So uh, my 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 for everything changed. I, I got in my faith mode. I'm not talking about yelling and screaming, but a place of authority. Yeah. And it shall be to me and my house and my family a name of joy uh -huh. and praise and honor before all the nations of the earth. I declare this right now. Lord, I thank you for it right now. What did I do? Just in that little moment, I turned it into an act of faith. Mm -hmm. I received that thing. Then I began to Push it out there and notice his come from the Holy Ghost right now. When you begin to prophesy in faith and by the power of the Lord, not only are you prophesying the word of the Lord, but you begin to push him good. You <laughs> with that, hey, you look like little Richard. <laughs> That's my Ethiopian prince. <laughs> but when you when we start prophesying, you're actually you begin to push back. The enemy that's against you right then. That's why the Lord shared this to me many years ago. That many, how do I say this? Many things have to be prophesied. Many things you're going to have to declare it. You're going to have to prophesy. Why? Because one thing, no, don't do that. Shh, be quiet. Don't, don't be loud like that. When you begin to prophesy, you're actually pushing the enemy back. See, that's why the enemy tries to close your mouth. Be like, well, I guess we just going to do that. No, no, no. We're going to live and not die. We're happy. We're blessed. I'm rich. I'm I'm skinny. <laughs> oh yeah, say it, say it in your belly bubbling, looking like Santa Claus. But then, uh oh no, we are slim, trim, trim, fit, fine, and good God Almighty, living long, strong, and healthy. You may be feeling feeble and unfit, but you gotta prophesy over yourself what the Word of God. As me and Prophet Damien was talking about a few days ago, good God Almighty, it is not enough just to live your life with God said it, and that settles it. That is not what the scripture teaches us. The scripture teaches us in Job, is it 22 and 28? It says, you shall declare a thing. Yeah. You shall decree a thing, and your decreeing a thing is what establishes it in the earth. It ain't enough. Just, we read, just read the scripture. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Ain't it pretty? Yeah. He shall be to me a name of joy. I will restore the year. See, this is the way most Christians live their whole life and never mm -hmm. see the hand of God work because we haven't learned these little secrets here. You just read that scripture. Oh, wow. What I, what I read, Joel yeah. 2 and 25. And he will restore the year that the canker worm and the caterpillar. Isn't that good what God would do for Joel and those people there? The Bible is oh, it's so sweet. Let me put it back on the coffee table and it, you know, it'd be sitting there all week long. No, when I read that right there, that's for me. Yeah. I'm Abraham C. Yeah. I got a right to this. I got to prophesy this thing over my marriage, over my family. Good God Almighty, we are marriage made in heaven, manifested in the earth. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. We twins in the spirit. Good yeah. God Almighty. Yeah. And when we begin to prophesy and notice it's an act of faith, you may not feel it, but when you begin to prophesy in the spirit, you actually... Popping your enemy in the head. And it comes with, Holy Ghost just showed me that deal. I never saw that or said it before, but that's what he just said. When you begin to prophesy, it's like you popping your enemy in the head. You, it, it's a yeah. matter of, okay, think about it. That, that could be very well true, and it is true because that ties in with Ephesians 6 uh, that talks about uh, the, the weapons that we have and the sword of the spirit, yeah. which is what? The word of yeah. God. 
Prophecy is the inspired, fresh off of the cooker word of God. See, so if the word of God, the written word of God can be a sword in my mouth, the prophetic word can have those same similar activity. So he just said to us that when you begin to prophesy over your child, mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Oh, my children are an inheritance from the Lord and a reward from the Lord. See, you're popping that enemy back that's trying to make them be the opposite of that. Because what we're saying when we're prophesying well, over our kids, our family, businesses, whatever, it's already in the word. Yes. So it's already God's word. It's already the sword of the spirit. So we're not making up anything. You know what I'm saying? We're just going along the lines of what the Bible is already saying. And like we said, we're taking it for ourselves. Therefore, when we take it, we say it. And, and, and what you're doing now, when you start saying it, you start swinging that sword. Yeah. Long as yeah. long as you're not saying it, the sword up. just sitting there looking oh, all man. shiny. On yeah. Oh, I got a big sword up there, and the <laughs> devil and the devil see your sword. So yeah. he first he kind of moves slow with you. He's like, girl, God, she got all that word over yeah. there. She been reading all these books, but she and he ain't saying that. Uh -huh. They got out. Oh, they've been reading Sidney Trim. They've been reading Apostle this and all of this. But he go a situation. He go feelings. He go all of this. He's, he's scared of her. He's like, well. But every time he's inching closer, yeah. that inch closer is more thoughts, yeah. more imagination, yeah. more lies. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, see, he's yeah. like, they're going to get the sword. They ain't going to get their sword. Next thing you know, they come a full fledged attack against you. Now you in one room, you over there, the kids that left the house, the job, everything just falling apart. Demons just going full blast at work. Why? Because your sword is on the mantle. But when you put that word of God, the prophetic word, the scriptures in your mouth, it's a sword and you're pushing, you're popping that devil on the head. But if you don't start saying nothing, that's why we say it's a walk of faith. And God remind me about that because I was just like, Lord. I don't feel like saying nothing. He said, son, when, when you start living like this, he said, when has it ever been by what you feel? Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is, and I was just like, Lord, that is so not right. So I just, let me get my speaking, turn it on back up another night. I ain't got to feel nothing when I'm saying the word of God. It's by faith. It's true because God said it and I believe it. So I'm saying it. This is the spirit of faith. We believe, not feel. We believe, not feel. We believe and therefore we speak. That's for the eyes. No, no, it's a I told you that be holy go. If I ever pray for you and minister and some hit you, just yeah. just fall out on the floor. It's it's holy ghost. Hold that my spirit is anointed. Okay. The breath of the Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but what are you getting at this morning? Yeah. Why are these things we're talking about this morning? Because these God's desire and the word of the Lord is full restoration. Mm -hmm. I'm giving, I'm prepared. To give you back. Do you hear that? Now yeah. that's kind of unusual prophetic word there. Mm -hmm. God is prepared. Mm -hmm. He's he's perched, prepared, ready to pour out, yeah. to restore. Yeah. You see, you see, but now there's a hole in the bag. Mm -hmm. See, that hole in the bag could be that undiscovered wicked place. Mm -hmm. That amazing. see, it's a place where the enemy keeps getting in there. Mm -hmm. See, it, it, it's a place that you have not recognized. You know what? Who, who was this? Uh, years ago, uh, years ago, when I was a young guy, I used to work construction, right? And I and I knew there was a um, a, a, a guy who used to work with us. There was a little crew of us and stuff like that. And he was on drugs, and he would get off of drugs. Off, he would break it. And he was a good guy. He would just get on drugs. But I noticed he would go go weeks, sometimes months, and didn't smoke crack, didn't do anything. He was just good, just straight, very intelligent guy. Mm -hmm. But then he would he would fall off the horse, and they would say, right? But I noticed. And I, Notice over and over again, it was the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Every time he got back on crack cocaine, that crack is a drug, right? Every time he got back on on drugs, it started the same way. He he would he stopped he stopped going to church, mm -hmm. went down there to the juke joint down there where they hung out with the club, mm -hmm. and it started with a cigarette. Oh, because he would stop everything. It started back. He got him a cigarette. Then he got him a drink. See, the, all of that, and every time it was the same scenario, the same process. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? So now what you're going, what we would do is call crack cocaine the problem. But see, I'm looking at it, if you could eliminate those steps before you smoke that rock or whatever they, you do now, whatever, see, you never going to get to the crack. Mm -hmm. See, if you see, but he never, he, he never recognized like, look, See, that's how when, we, when people get saved, what's one of the things you probably did the same thing. When people get born again, for I know for myself, I, I, I had God separated me from everybody. Mm -hmm. 
from from my family people. It wasn't me trying to be better than nobody. I just knew something had happened in me, and I didn't want to do the stuff they was doing no more. And God knew I needed to grow. I, see, a lot of times people get saved and kind of run right back over in the same crowd. You're not strong enough to do that. Right. You need to separate yourself. Let God build you up in the Word and in your faith. Then maybe you can go back around those people and situations and be strong enough not to be lured back into it. See what I'm saying? See, but he did. He did. He never recognized that. Like, wow, when I do this and I do that. That gets me back in this place. Mm -hmm. So that's that wicked place with us that even though we're praying in tongues, we do it. You can even fast. See what I'm saying? And pray and stuff like that. But if we're not looking for, mm -hmm. you know, looking for that wicked place. See, we're just looking for that good feeling. And, what, and you can hit that with a good song. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, it feel good. But I'm looking for that opening somewhere. It's almost like being a, a problem hunter. See, yeah, okay, here we go. See, we're problem hunters for other people. I can tell you everything wrong with my wife. I can tell you everything wrong with my brother. Listen to me. I can tell you everything wrong with my daughter. I can tell you everything wrong with my supervisor. But can't name two and a half things that's wrong with you. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Think about it. So how is it possible that we all are human beings or spirits living in a human body, but everybody around us got all these issues, but I'm... Flawless, and I'm just I'm I'm numero uno. It is finished. Uno more, uno mas. What we listen to? Uno mas. Yeah, but you said, how is that possible? It's not possible. Bishop, apostle, prophet is not possible. You see what I'm saying? So, so to recognize this enemy, so I can get full restoration. So, what is it, what will that equate? What that look like? Not gonna lose no more. See, think about that. Not gonna lose no more. See, because we, we we understand that's a lot from hell, everything that me and Pastor Prophet Damien, I think it was him talking about that, how people just will say things like, everything that happened in my life, it was God. I heard people about getting ready to get divorced, they'd be like, well, you know, God got something better. You know what I mean? That's why he moved him and moved. No, 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 no. Because the scripture tells you, God said he hates divorces. Mm -hmm. So how, see, see, see how you fix that? Mm -hmm. See see how we go against the Bible to try to make our flesh be right? No, 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 no. Well, you know, God got, well, see, this, they fired me because God getting ready to bless me and they they hating on me. Could it be you hateful? Yeah. And, and you reaping what you sowed, you're a hateful or oh, bitter person. You see what I'm saying? We, we would never assume that. What would you call the baby? A na nice, nasty? Yeah. You would never assume that you are a nice, nasty person. I told you, any, when I've, over my life, I've met people, not many people, but I've met a few people that, that when you would ask them to describe them, they say, oh, I'm nice, I'm very sweet, I'm very this. Every, it's never fair. The ones that said that, they were the very opposite of that. They was nice, nasty. Now I can look and say, oh, you, they were nice. They're thinking they be a nice in the nasty ways they do and stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh -uh, I was nice when I did that. Uh, that's your level of nice, but that doesn't mean it was nice. And, and see, and I'm going to tell you this, but this is what I'm learning too. And, and this is not a complete theory as of yet, but I'm just, uh, uh, you know, taking the service of certain stuff. Nice people don't have to put on a switch. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Nice people are nice. Naturally, the, the people that I've heard that come out with this, I'm nice and I'm sweet. It's like right in your presence, they switch it back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, oh, come here, baby. And then at the same breath, you put that. Well, hold on, God, who was that? Oh, that was just my authority and walking in right there. Mm -hmm. That was nasty right there. You almost made that man stand up in the corner. He's like, hey, I'm gonna do it, but don't let me. Yes. Don't let me. Yes. Now you know I can. And then it's like. So that means it's on and off. Like you see what I'm saying? It's see, it's not it's not genuine. Most nice people are really nice, and it's like you push them to a place, and then the ugly will come out. But see, it's normal. They just like man. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's a difference. You know what I mean? Wow. Can I add something to like um, when we're talking about you know the old things coming back up to where we're falling back into the negative old habits and stuff like that going back to jeremiah 33 verse 8 that we read mm -hmm. and he said and i will cleanse them of all their iniquity wow. whereby they have sinned against me so the part that like was illuminated to me was the part and i will cleanse them so if you are asking god to search me lord if there's any wicked way in me Okay, 
now he 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 revealed it to you right mm -hmm. so now that he revealed it to you now you're going even further and you're asking god to get rid of it right mm -hmm. so when you're getting rid of it that i mean when you're asking him to get rid of it that's in his word that he's going to cleanse you so when he cleanses you it that means it's not there anymore so like the example that came to my mind was like okay when you're doing dishes your plate has residue of old food on it that's why you're about to wash it right so if you give it to oh let me finish first so then the second half um no verse nine the beginning of it said and it shall be and it shall be to me a name of joy. So that dish right now, you're not pleased with it because it's dirty, right? So you go, you put it in the dishwasher or you put it in the sink to wash it to get that residue food off. So now you feel joy, not necessarily joy, but you're happier. You feel more comfortable with eating off of that plate now that it's cleansed. But if you ate off that plate and had food residue, you wouldn't have really felt too good about it at all. But that is to go further into what we were talking about first, as far as like the enemy is bringing things back up in our past or in um in our old situations that are coming back up in our life. Now we're falling back into the wrong crowd. Now we're falling back into the drugs. Now we're falling back into the attitude because we honestly didn't allow God to cleanse us after he revealed it to us. Now, if it's cleansed, the enemy has nothing that he can pull back. If he tries to pull it back, now that you know God's word that I have been cleansed of it, you will not allow the enemy to let you fall back into that trap and condemn you of those old actions of that that you did when you sinned against god so that was just something that just really like fell heavy on me it's like okay we might understand the things that we're going through and the things that put us in a rut or the things that had set us back all those years but we didn't honestly allow god to cleanse us and so since it's not cleansed the enemy still has it that he can use anytime he want throughout your years Wow, hey, that that yeah, that, that is true. That's so 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 that's something I'm gonna add. Gotta add that to my prayers too. See what I'm saying? So so Lord, search me. If there be mm -hmm. a wicked way in us, in me, of course there is mm -hmm. something. See what I'm saying? And and, and notice there's categories with that. See that could that. See, now I want to make sure when we say if there be a wicked way in me, that doesn't don't just jump to I don't smoke drugs, I don't commit adultery. It could be a situation in your classroom. See, and you and there's a problem going on with you and a student or a teacher, whatever, and you think it's the student or the other people or the whatever. But it, see, in that little area right there, see what I'm saying? Or it could be with you at the beauty salon. With, you see, it could be with you in the grocery store. But see, what's the main little common, common denominator there? It's you at school, you at the so you, 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 you. So then, so when we get to God, so now cleanse me of that. So help me recognize that. And a lot of times, you know, it, it's like, it, it's, you know what, I, I'll say this. I think sometimes actions that we, okay, okay, I think this is the Holy Ghost. This, this is going to sound, sound kind of strange, but I think it may be absolutely right. Listen to this. There are certain strategies and uh, attitudes and actions that we took on when we were going through. Mm -hmm. Like when, when people were taking advantage of us. When people were hurting us or people were stealing from us or we had lost certain things and you may have needed certain attitudes and actions, aggressive actions to survive because he was trying to hurt you. They were cheating on you. They were uh, trying to manipulate. They were trying to take advantage of you on the job. Right. So you have to have a tougher skin. Right. In that season. See. See, you coming out of Egypt, going through the wilderness right there. But see, then, then, but it's sometimes we keep, I call it survival compared to success. Mm -hmm. See, it's like sometimes we, you, when you're in survival mode, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to survive. I'm just trying to live. So you fight, you scratch, and you're crawling. Now God survives you. He's trying to bring you into success mm -hmm. where different enemy now, different kind of strategy now, but you're still kicking and hitting and making sure and pushing and whatever. You see what I'm saying? But see, oh God, what worked in the last season can become a wicked way in the new season. Oh God, that was, oh my God. So what worked in the last season for you so well 
can could actually become a wicked way, meaning it's an outdated technique. I used this when I was dealing with Helen. See, I used this when I was working at that old job. Well, these supervisors, yeah, have you seen it? You definitely you see it in movies. You see people in TV shows in different situations. People, people, you hear people open them and say, well, hey, I'm not like him. Right. I'm not them. But see, you're not convinced of that because you know everybody the same. Mm -hmm. They all out to get you. Everybody lying. You can't trust nobody. You see what I'm saying? So that has become a wicked way in you. And because you had that, that mentality before it was necessary. Because sometimes we was in a state where we were, what's the word? Not ignorant, but it's called naive. That you're like, okay, yeah, I trust everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can have my car keys. Oh, yeah, you want $100? Yeah. Girl, you know he ain't going to pay you back. Oh, no, he said he would. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, so, you, so you built a tougher skin. See, but it was necessary right then. You see what I'm saying? So it's like that survival mm -hmm. mode and success mode. So it's, I guess, once again, the Holy Spirit must be the choreographer of our life. Mm -hmm. Do that move now. Yeah. Perry, amen. Mm -hmm. Is that right? You know, do that, do that now. See, but flesh have you doing, oh God, flesh will have you doing, you got you got a bucket full of the right move. Right? But see, they're not right if you don't do them at the right time. Yeah. But flesh will have, oh my God, it's the whole time. Listen, we're getting ready to go. Flesh will have you doing the right thing, but it's at the wrong time. Yeah. So you're standing your ground. It ain't time for that, baby. You see what I'm saying? Well, now you're being quiet and bashful. It ain't the time for that. Flesh will have you doing the right thing. Flesh, flesh will have you even doing scripture stuff. And you can look at the script, what the scripture says then. But if it's not Holy Ghost led, it won't be the wisdom of God. It'll be a wicked thing. Man, is that good? Yeah. That, that, see, that's, that's, see, that's how we can be stuck with you because you, you and I and other people can be like, I know I'm in the work. I know I'm right. You could very well be right, so to speak, but it's not, your, your actions are not being prompted and led by the Holy Spirit because you're not out away from that place with God. Yeah. You're more sensitive to your flesh and your emotions. Yeah, if you're looking to get more emotional, more flashy, mad, quicker, directed. You know, just, you just a flashy, it's flesh is moving away. But you're trying to do the right thing from a fleshly uh, atmosphere. You ever seen people trying to praise God and be all hard and rough? Well, what about this? You know, we talked about this before. People come and come to church, they rushing, they late, they've been fuzzing and fighting, trying to get to church. Were, you're already at church, already ready to worship. They come there, let's stir up the spirit. Let's get this on us right now. Come on, praise through. Because you feel like we already praise so through. Yeah, but it's like, but see, they come, they doing the right thing. Yeah. But it's prompted by their fleshy situation. Yeah. See, that's how Christians can stay stuck for years. It's like, we're worshiping, we're praising. I, I stood my ground. But it was it was choreographed by flesh. Flesh prompted you to do that. It wasn't even the Holy Ghost, even though it was a scripture. That's why the Bible says the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. The spirit gives life. Let's, 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 let's get ready right to it. Anything else you want to share? Well, I mean, just before we had went further, um, it brought back a memory of how um, I used to no. I guess it also goes along now what you said that we can use the scripture but in the wrong way. But then also we can use the scripture but not fully understand the scripture because we didn't really receive it. But then when you keep reading and keep meditating on God's word, he reveals other words to you to where now it clicks of this scripture that you've been meditating. So now you put it together and it's like, okay, these scriptures go together for this situation because earlier when we were talking about that he will cleanse us um, you know, a famous prayer <laughs> that people always said was like, Lord, cleanse me or burn me with his stuff, and I shall be cleansed, wash me, and I shall be watered in snow. And it's like we're saying that, we're praying that, we're declaring it, decreeing it, but we can't fully take it, we can't feel fully um understand it because we haven't really understood in the word that God will cleanse us. That because of us looking to him and because of us fully putting in our desires to be washed, to be cleansed by him, he's going to do it. He has already cleansed us. When we ask him to search us, now we can ask him to cleanse us. Now we can know that we are cleansed. Now the enemy can't come to us and be like, hey, you remember you did this back in the day. Excuse me? God washed me clean. That's who I serve. I serve God. For an example, like those bags, why I want to say bag 
these are kids who have not been trained up properly and they've been doing disruptive things. Now their parent believes that they are good, right? Their parent, or if they did do something bad, their parent forgave them and they're like, okay, let's start over. Let's start a new slate. Let's move past this. But people in the past that experienced it was like, oh, aren't they the one who did this? Are they the one who did that? But their parent is like, what are you talking about? My child is good now. My child, you know, that was in the past. So that's what God is to us. God is like, hey, I cleansed you of those sinful ways. So why are you allowing the enemy to come and bring it back to you? So when the enemy comes and bring it back, it's like, whoa, no, my child is good. I cleansed them. We are God's child. We are God's children, right? So we, we are cleansed. Therefore, the enemy can't bring that back up. We shouldn't allow him to bring it back up. Yes, he is. That's what I'm going out of all my faith. Receiving it, holding on to the truth of God's word. And after you pray, you begin to thank God. You know what I mean? See, that, that goes back to that feeling. Like, you may not always feel a gift. Sometimes you will. But not always. You might not feel that it happened. But you know by faith that I prayed it, believing that God cannot lie. So you be the heart of God. Thank you that you showed me this wicked way. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that we cut it with the water of the Spirit, you're cleansing me, that cleansing me, purging me. And I just thank you for right now, God, for my faith that I'm clean. We just pray it now. Thank you right now, Father God, for us, your people that are here in this work right now, God, and revealing to us, your people, searching us, God, helping us to search. And you search us, oh God, and seeing that wicked way, if there be a wicked way in us. If it be a wicked way in us, oh God, and then God, we thank you for also helping us to recognize it and then cleansing us, purging us from that, oh God. By faith, oh God, right now, we declare that I am clean. By fact, that goes with First John uh, 1 and 9, that if you confess your faults. See, but think about it, you can't confess it if you don't recognize it. Yeah. See, I ain't got no, I ain't, what was the first thing in AA and the drugs? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I'm an alcoholic. My name is Johnny, and I'm an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. No, I ain't no alcoholic. We, see, if you don't ever acknowledge it and confess it, you can't deal with it. So, but then that allows God to cleanse you. Yeah. See, if you confess your faults. One, confess your faults and your sin unto him. He's faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How do you receive that? By faith. Just like salvation. You, you, you know you don't always live a same, same perfect life. You know what I mean? Just the fact that you want to stop the person that put in front of you. you, you that one Jesus like right there. But Lord, forgive What do you do? Lord, forgive me for that. Yeah. And you don't go around the rest of the day, oh my God, I almost, I almost know. Say so you don't self condemn yourself over that, but you will in other places. Yeah. But God, we just thank you today, God. We, we we thank you for a brand new slate. Yeah, and we declare, God, that we're giving others, uh, our each other, and others in our lives a brand new slate. Oh, can, can, can we say that? You trying to pray? You trying to preach what? Oh, can we step that low? Oh God, you get that? Let's 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 do that together too. No God, and help us right now. To give not only ourselves, to give not only ourselves and, but those that are connected to us, who are connected to us our, spouses, our spouses, our children, our children family members, members co workers, co -workers community, oh God, community, all of those that we're connected to, give them a clean slate. Give them a clean slate Stop them. approaching them. Stop approaching them as if, as if we haven't if forgiven we them. We haven't forgiven them. Isn't that something? Yeah. Because we just started, like, we were watching that, was that marriage picture last night, how the guy was like, I thought we did a reset. Yeah. But every time they had a conversation, she was home. coming, she started right off three months ago. But I, he's like, I thought we was moving past this. You know what I mean? Can we, I thought we started fresh. So if you think about it from that mentality, you never can move forward again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you hurt my feelings in March. I thought we, I, I apologize for that. And you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. See, and that's what the image keeps you. That's a wicked one. Mm -hmm. See, but thank God for clear thank to you. be able to let it go. Thank you, Father. Well, that's love. Mm -hmm. uh, First Corinthians 13 talks about that love chapter says we don't keep a list of wrongs. Mm -hmm. See that? That's that. Yeah. Don't keep a list of wrongs. 
Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? It's, it's, that's why we say God is the God of a second chance. Because every time you come back in, it's brand new. I know people, oh, it's, it's chance 14, 2025 with me for me. No, not really. It's brand new because he throws your sins in the sea of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. They're under the blood. Yeah. The scripture is Romans 8 and 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those that be in Christ Jesus. And I'm going to say there's no more condemnation for those that be in my house, that be in my family, in my workplace. You see, did you see that? I know I'm not going to be a condemning per a condemning Christian. Not going to do it. So, Father God, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you for the prophetic word. God is restoring our years. God is helping us recognize our enemy that be in us, the enemy outside of us. God helping us recognize him so we can practice James 4, 7, submit to God. Resist that enemy and he shall flee in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Well, as we always say, if you have a prayer request, uh, about something that we, uh, when you have a prayer request or you have a question about something we talked about today, or if you want to sow an offering or a gift into our ministry, uh, if you inbox us, we can take care of the prayer request. We can try to answer the question. Also, you look at it on the page there. There's information about how you can sow an offering, a gift, or inbox me or my wife, Vanessa, and we'll get you that information, right? Well, like we always say, as we get ready to close, this is the victory that overcome world, even out of faith, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the ever-living God. God. Blessings, you all. See you later. Glory to God. Bye.